What's up, everybody, and welcome to First 10, my podcast that kind of gets you ready for the day. Sometimes it's the middle of the day, whatever, and you'll notice we have a special guest across the screen from me, an old friend, somebody who's been on this space many times before. Fort, what's up, brother? What's up, man? It's good to you know be back, and like I told you a minute ago, I like the backwards hat. I feel like you just ran a marathon on your way. I I yeah, that was a couple weeks ago, um, and it was only a relay leg, but that's all right. I, I should have went for a run. I was lazy today. I didn't. It's hey, too bad. It's all right. We're all human. <laughs> it's watching baseball, too. We'll yeah. get to that. Uh, first, want to remind you, though, that we are brought to you, as always, by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is wall-to-wall pirates. There are appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and, of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone. Open every day at the North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. So the Pirates had a pretty good road trip for it, I would, I would argue. They finished strong, didn't start out the best. I want to talk specifically, though, about the play, at least to start, about the play at the end of Saturday's game. Cody Bellinger slides in. We both, you know, we were going back and forth. Just, <laughs> and kidding, you, just kidding. You ghosted me. You ghosted <laughs> I'm me. I'm just kidding. I you, had to. I know. I know. I know. That's how I feel. Um, so what was your reaction? What would you think? Um, it's very unclear. I, I mean – if they would have said inconclusive, the fact that they use the word confirm means yeah. that they know that they didn't get it wrong and they never get anything wrong. And it did bring up a lot of memory. So I went back and looked at some of the mill stuff and the fact he apologized is great. You know, he made yeah, Jerry, Jerry Neal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is we still lost the game. Nothing changed. You know, you're talking about over a decade ago and they have replay for a reason. If he would have said inconclusive, I think I could be like, okay, that's kind of normal. But the fact that he said anything about a tag in that gray area got this much wider makes no sense because you can't explain it to me to make it make sense. He tags him. He rolls. He's coming up with the ball. And I said, it's for all the glory when you're in Little League to hold up that ball and say, I got him. I right. got him. And then they don't explain it. I So now I don't know how to tag anybody. I don't know what – actual like contact at the plate really means i don't know when a play is over so yeah they have a lot of things to answer they never will but yeah. like they should and i wish that they'd be more transparent like they talked about last year in an article they haven't been and i think it's a disjustice to some great people in that umpire committee that you know i've been friends with with a long time but even them like they can't answer the questions properly it's like just break down this play right like, what made you decide this show us the angle of this, what is the time of possession? Right, I felt like we were breaking down a football play. What about you? We, we were, we were. That's exactly. I think a football play is the perfect what perfect analogy for it. And also, like, if anybody's watching this and thinking, like, why are these two idiots hammering Saturday's game or this play at the plate? I mean, that that could have prevented the Pirates from a sweep. And also, I brought it up, so you can criticize me all you want. I I think <laughs> I think what he did was the equivalent of a football move. Like in football, you make a play with the ball or make a move with the ball that establishes a catch. To me, he made a move with the ball that establishes a tag. He moved on to the next thing. It's no different than two middle infielders. If somebody gets the ball and they go to throw to first base and the ball flips out of their gloves because of an exchange, it's not like the first out doesn't count. It counts. That was the same thing with Joey Bart. He went on to the next thing, whether you agree with him or not, of raising the ball up. And at that point, that should have been it. it you that, that's it. He's out. It's over. I said this today. Assuming makes what these guys assume something they cannot answer. So it either has to be something that cannot be reviewable. Go back to old school. If you drop the ball, it's over. Right? He's safe. Or define what actually is a tag. What you can and can't do. Do I need to hold on to the ball until I actually make a move to second base? Yeah. And then if I drop it, is that the transition? The intent was to hold this ball up. You can see it plain as day, looked at it from many angles. But the fact is they're talking about the tag. Yeah. He already tagged the guy. Cody's looking this way to get the response. Umpire's about to go here. Ball falls. Cody hits the ball out of his hand. Makes no sense. You can't make it make sense. They're assuming, and they should be ashamed that they're not more responsible and more transparent. MLB should fix this. They should. Yeah. They I mean, should there's fix no way. Explaining it. There's no way they can change the outcome of the game. No, no, but they also should allow protest again. That rule that came in 2021 that they just kind of yeah, and it's crazy, man. Like, I mean, how do you, you have any what, leverage? Yeah, you don't. 
you don't. But you know what I'd like to see them do? I would like to see them. The, the Pirates go back to Wrigley. It's not like they can't yeah. pick up that game. Pick up the game where you left off. At least that's a solution, right? I The, the worst case scenario. And maybe the Cubs I, win, and that's fine. And right. they should, no, no issue. But I, right. I just, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I, it, it's tough. I could go on and on. But yeah, like, I, know. I, I hate that it's the outcome of the game. And everybody says, oh, it's just one game. You should have scored before. The reality of it is, if we are one game out, Pittsburgh is going to go bonkers about that that one instance. And that's the reality. A lot of teams are going to be fighting for a wild card. We may be one of them. It may be one game, and that may be the one we remember. All right. So let's transition to a little bit more uh, full season topic for 22 and 26. The Pirates sit six games back in the division, a game ahead of Card- the Cardinals. They're actually in third place in the Central, which is a bit surprising to me. Um, but having taken three or four from Chicago, where are you at with this team? Are you encouraged? Are you questioning what's going on with how do you feel about how they've played so far? I think an identity is coming together. I liked a lot of things over this road trip. We started running. We saw some bunts. We saw some things that, you know, aren't sitting back and waiting. Like we can talk offense, break down right philosophy, wrong philosophy, but it's like, where are you at now? we got to do something now. We can't wait and for someone to get hot. Like Jack Sawinski hit a homer today. He's going to get hot. He's done it every year. It's going to trend in direction. The way we started the season completely belittled his chance to get going early. Hopefully that happens, but it, we've seen it time and time again. But in the meantime, hey, why don't you run some more? Why don't you lay down a bunt? And that's what we're doing now, and it's so encouraging because our pitching is off the charts, and they're going to lead this battle. There's no question in my mind. The leaders at the front, one's got a mustache, and one has a great man like mustache right here off his chest. The little guy Jones. <laughs> Why don't I, people call it taco meat? And I'm just like, that's just weird. I like tacos, and I don't want to think about that. Taco meat, like the yeah. the, the 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 chest hair fuzz yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's, it's he's just pronouncing his manhood. I love it. All right, that's fine. I like the two of them. I don't want to think about Jared Jones's chest hair though. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, We'll just think about his fastball slide. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sort of with you, though. Um, and I didn't realize that they've been running more um, until, well, this series really is when it, it started clicking for me. But I, I want to see more of that. I want to see more of what was shown last year in the 20-8 and eight start. Get on the bases. Get aggressive. Do things. Force the issue. Um, obviously, getting on base first and foremost would be uh, the most important thing. And they are doing that a little bit better. Um Okay, so I wrote a column today, and I mentioned you in it, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Not that I did any great work, but you did, and you should be commended for you this. You always do great work. Shut your mouth, you humble soul. All right, but it, this is about you, and it's about Kutch. So I wrote a column about Kutch, sort of looking under the hood at his season. And I said to him, I said, I've never seen anybody may, get robbed as many times as you have this season. Um, and I said, like, I, I don't know how you keep your head on straight. And he laughs. He goes, it's not on straight. Like that's how the interview started. And so we talked for a while about that. And he said that you, Michael McHenry, have been sending him things to sort of stay positive and remind him what's happening because Andrew McCutcheon, the process of what he's been doing has been really good. It's just the results. They're starting to turn. But we're talking about things like barrel rate, exit velocity, um, what, uh, uh, bat speed, yeah, on base, yeah, all of it. yeah, like his expected slugging percentage when I looked at it was over 500. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's still up there. Um, so anyway, what did you do? I was just a friend, honestly. I mean, I, I love the guy, we, we've been friends for a long time. I know what it looks like for a superstar to be in a clubhouse with a bunch of young bucks that are either searching or possibly going to be superstars. They always are going to see him with a gold glove, MVP, you know taped across his chest and he's the black and gold. So he doesn't really have an outlet a lot of times. So, you know, I, I remind him, you know, certain swings, I send him funny gifts, which, you know, I love and just do the things friends should do because guys like that, a lot of times get overlooked. Like, Oh, he's cut. He's fine. Yeah. He's made his money. He's old. And the reality of it is, is like, he's showing that he's not old and there's a lot of things that are going in a really cool direction and it could manifest in a crazy way. If he does what he always does in June and July. All right, Fort. So the, the, and that's, that's really cool, by the way. I hope the next time I'm down in the dumps, I get a funny gift from you. you will. Or you can text me some stats about something. Um, Singagram is more your style, I think. What's that? The Singagram. Singagram. <laughs> <laughs> please. Yes. Please. Done. Uh, so I want to ask you about Rowdy Telez in the offense, but more Rowdy Telez. I, 
I like Rowdy a lot. Uh, he's a, an enjoyable soul in the clubhouse and keeps things light. And, and he and I go back and forth. Um, that doesn't separate how I feel about things from a baseball standpoint. And I don't know if I see the logic in sticking with him anymore. I think I'd rather dip down to triple a and see, see some young guys and see what they've brought, especially on the heels of what Nick Gonzalez has done. Where are you at with it? You're a former player. You've been in these shoes. You've, you've struggled. Like, do you ride it out or is it tough for you two to, you know, kind of keep it going as long as they have? I think you ride it out before the season. So they signed him to a one-year deal and kind of said, Hey, you're a placeholder. So he's got to be that. He knows what he came here to do and he's not doing what he can. And maybe a change of scenery for him would be great. I think it would be great for the Pirates, and Connor Joe's got to play. And I think the way it's kind of unfolding with Nick Gonzalez, you have Triolo that can float around. You can tell him being able to do that, not being a staple holder, that pressure is starting to go the other way. Yeah. So I think he thought he was going to be the utility guy, and I think we're a better team like that. So he, I'm not even thinking about anybody coming up. I'm thinking about what's best for Rowdy, what's best for the team, and it sucks when you're not playing well and you're getting paid. Yeah. You know, he feels that weight. You know, He said what he said to protect David Bednar. He's an incredible guy, good yep. teammate. But when you're not producing, that's the reality of the sport. And it's really hard to get him at bats right now. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that, 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 exactly. Like, how can you get him going good? Because you can't, exactly. you need to win games. You need, you need production. And that mm -hmm. largely that's going to come from Connor Joe. I think the biggest question is, you, do you outright release him or DFA him? And I think that's a conversation they walk through of like, hey, go get right. We want you here. We're going to pay you. We don't want to see you leave. That's that's the biggest thing for me. It's like if you believe that he could come back and maybe help you down the line, maybe somebody gets hurt, you're already paying him. Do you hold yeah. on to him or do you let him go? That's that's where I think they're trying to figure out what's the best way to go about this, you know, maybe in the media and for him because there's a lot of cool relationships with him and the coaching staff. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And it's a, it's a tough situation because mm -hmm. you do really like the guy. But if I'm going to, you know, take Mike Tomlin likes to say nameless gray faces. If you look at the roster and nameless gray faces, like you'd, you'd make the move. You'd make the move if you're sure. looking to optimize sure. your roster and try to get the most out of the guy. So it's true. And I know this is short, but like something that I think needs to be like thought through is like those at bats matter, like getting Jack Swinsky right. and like you saw what happened when Cruz started playing every day, even against lefties, he went off for a little while. These guys just need to have that and are, it's so tough with the way our roster is built. That may help guys get extra bats. Seeing cuts in right field today was huge. Maybe Oliveras can play a little first base because he seems to find a lot of barrel. But, you know, he sat for a while and, you know, you start to trend that way because you try to do more as a player. I know. And I think they should be criticized for how they handled Jack at the beginning of the year. Bunch of lefties, they sit him. I think that's part of the reason that his the start to his season was not good. He did not get off on a, any consistent foot. And then you're basically doing the same thing to Rowdy and saying, hey, you need to find it. You need He's to find catch. it with seven ABs a week. Like, Yeah, and I've, 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 I've had seasons where I got a ton of bats early on. I had seasons where I didn't play for two weeks to start the year for no reason. We were just yeah. winning, and it's a different animal, man, because you, you're like, what do I have to do to play? And if there's no communication, which I don't know, but I hope there is, and it looks like Jack's making some really good movement changes, and that homer today was encouraging. And yeah. by the way, he owns Ty Young. Holy! I shit. know, right? Holy! I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. It was it was four homers in his first six at bats against Jamo. Yeah, for five seven. seven oh, two five. walks, four homers. I mean, the guy's been in the league three years. I know. <laughs> homers. I know. It's crazy. But I talked to Jamo about Jack. I, I I should look up the quote, and it was a good one too. It was typical Jamo. <laughs> like he's such a good talker. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he 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 laughs about it too. But like, I can't get Sawinski out but yeah <laughs> all right all right good talk i'll see mm -hmm. you out there for thank you as always we need to do this more it's been far too long no doubt i miss you buddy Thanks i miss you too all right i'll see you at the park make sure you like and subscribe you can this and content from all of our other post gazette writers here on the north shore drive talk to you tomorrow Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.